get this shit cramping in this disease. Oh, yeah. Come on, Bruce. Bruce, won't you? You got to run this kind of football. You see him on television every night. You pass. I want to watch you. You want to watch me? Cartoons, <laughs> son. Right. <laughs> None whatsoever, uh, as far as I'm personally concerned, because uh, these people knew what they were doing. Uh, they walked in the cockpit, of course, behind one of the girls, and almost immediately reached up and pulled the oxygen mask down, pulled them away as though they had been using them for the last five or ten years. And approximately five minutes after that, we are also made aware of the fact that we no longer had any first-class passengers. So uh, could we have uh, even entertained the thought of uh, depressurizing the airplane either rapidly or at a slow rate? We would not, uh, couldn't possibly have had enough oxygen mass to go around because people were back in the back, sitting in other people's flaps. We had 146 passenger airplane, we had 143 people on board. So uh, this was a case of uh, uh, people that had done some studying in this area and knew what they were doing and uh, uh, really dead set in their, in their ways. Well, I think any campaigning that the president does for members of his own party will certainly be, uh, be effective, but this is a kind of race where he's certainly not campaigning for Goodell, say, in New York State. And it's very difficult to put party labels on people this year. You've got an awful lot of switching, perhaps more so than ever before. There's more liberal, moderate, uh, uh, conservative vote uh, voting this year, perhaps than we've had in the last uh, two or three decades. Now, as a Capitol Hill correspondent, do you feel that Benson or Bush will be actually ahead? I, I can't say. I was in uh, Houston last night talking to some people who were very, very close with, uh, with both uh, uh, campaigns, and uh, they're both agreeing that it's going to be extremely close, extremely tight race. These young people have a right to be disturbed that after, uh, certainly the FBI with its exhaustive uh, uh, studies uh, decided that the shootings were unwarranted, this grand jury has stated that uh, the uh, killings were justified. It seems to me that you can't ignore the fact that the governor in Ohio had very strong feelings about what took place in his state. And you can't ignore that there are literally dozens of pictures that were made at the time of the shooting, which indicated that the students did not constitute a threat to the lives of the uh, National Guardsmen there at Kent State.
You can save the American taxpayer, including yourself, part of $180,000 a year by keeping an eye to the sky. Weather Bureau stations across the nation launch about 300 radio sounds like this every day. The miniature weather stations rise as high as 20 miles. They send back temperature readings, humidity, wind velocity, and barometric pressure readings. The balloon eventually bursts, and the package returns to Earth by parachute. Each radio sound package, balloon, and parachute cost about $30, and only about one-fourth of them are ever returned. Most of them are never heard of again, landing in remote areas. But if you do spot a radio sound package, full instructions for returning it to the reconditioning center at Joliet, Illinois, are attached. And it's such a package as you see right here. This is a Weather Bureau radio sign. The instruments can then be used again once they are renovated at a cost of only about $8. And the manager of the Weather Bureau here in Fort Worth, Peter Pruitt, reveals that many thousands of dollars are spent locally on the radio sign program. The radio sound instruments that we send aloft cost about $30 a piece. Routinely, we send up two of them per day so that when we uh, tally this out, it comes to about $22,000 per year. When severe weather threatens, even more radio sound launchings are made, as often as one an hour when tornadoes threaten the area. About $3,000 of the money is recovered locally in returned instruments, but alert citizens could save more and do the weathermen a favor too. One radio sound, for instance, has been flown, found, repaired, and flown again seven different times. Upper air specialist Jack Ozy filled this one particular balloon, a small model, with helium, which reminded me of my old uh, chemistry class and another effect of helium. Sometimes known as laughing gas, as you can well see why, or called a funny-sounding weatherman. <laughs> this is Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move, in Fort Worth. In the immediate future, I think what uh, uh, will happen is a, a, a widening of the process of mutual self-discovery, of discovering between Roman Catholics and Methodists a, co a common or shared heritage uh, in spiritual life, in um, Christian experience, in the uh, concerns and aims uh, of um, their respective Christian professions. Uh, in the uh, in the somewhat longer future, uh, I expect to see uh, some informal relationship between the two churches at the level of structure. Specifically, I think that initially the president really wanted a good report to present to the American people, but then it got out of hand because, number one, we were saying some things that uh, uh, they had not wanted said. Uh, you recall the difficulties that we got in, uh, with the National Guard when we tried to suggest to them that an M1 rifle is designed to kill people. Now, this is, this is very basic. You've got to understand that. An M1 rifle is designed to kill. Now, that ought not be news to the Department of Defense or the head of the National Guard, but it was. Uh, when we asked the the general, General DeCalso, uh, in uh, Ohio, why is it you did not shoot over the heads of those students at Kent State? He said, that's too dangerous. 